Welcome everybody. Today we want to investigate how much brain power is needed for car racing. My name is Sandro and I want to compliment Amazon's text-to-speech algorithm that allows me to speak through this beautiful female voice. In order to find out more about car racing, we first need to design a car. Ah, what a unique piece of art, isn't it? In a second step, we generate different racing tracks. The generator samples maps randomly. This will later be useful to test whether the trained car generalizes well to unseen racing tracks. Next, we equip the car with a visual system. Three lasers measure the distances to the nearest barrier. In a fourth step, we need to introduce a brain to process the visual information and make proper decisions. A small artificial neural network will do this trick. The three distance measurements are processed over one hidden layer to two output neurons. The first regulates the gas pedal, and the second the steering wheel. Note that this kind of brain has no memory. Finally, we are ready to train the brain to drive a car. To do so, we use the simple evolutionary algorithm. In each generation we start with 50 randomly mutated cars. For every car, we measure the driven distance as its score. After the simulation, we select the three best cars, which will serve as parental prototypes for the mutated children of the next generation. For the best car, which always has a golden mark, we can see on top its score and its neural activities. Since our cars have no memory, they don't know about their current velocity. At first, the cars need to understand that it is good to drive forward and not backward. After a few more generations, almost all mutations are driving in the right direction. Some of them have even managed to overcome the first curve. And we have one outstanding performance. This will give great children in the next generation. This seems like a classic case of the last shall be first, let's see. Okay. Clearly this car could turn rounds forever. Yeah, that was easy. Now let's do a harder map and increase the brain power a little bit. As you can see, we added one neuron to the hidden layer. While we enjoy the simulations, I want to use the time to talk a little bit of what choices we have to make whenever we use any sort of evolutionary algorithm. When we train a neural network, we are looking for an optimal way of how strongly the neurons are connected to each other.
The currency of any kind of training algorithm is computational power. It is so fundamentally constrained by physical laws, such that the whole security paradigm like our bank account and cryptocurrencies relies on the assumption, that computational power is not free. It is computationally very inefficient to just randomly try out different combinations of neural connections. An evolutionary algorithm relies on the assumption, that if we have a decent solution to any problem, the next better solution is very similar to it. As long as this assumption is true, it drastically accelerates the search. Since the car has a limited grip on the ground, their curve radius is limited by their current velocity. It is very exciting to see that in order to deal with this problem our little friends are not just driving annoyingly slowly, but learn to take optimal trajectories in curves, that is, starting high at the opposite side, and going in low. Nice, we have now a winning car that can safely drive in this particular map. But how well does it generalize to another more complicated map? Let's find out. In this very large map, the car appears as a tiny object, almost like an ant. But see how well the acquired experience is transferred to this new map. Of course, this is not extremely surprising, since all the maps we generated are locally looking the same. For example, if we make the street only 50% wider, the car crashes after about 3 curves. However, in daily life, we benefit all the time from the fact that things behave locally similar. For example, if you visit a new town in a different country in a different culture. The network of roads and the way buildings are arranged are locally most likely very similar to your hometown. This is because there is a fundamental rational and city optimization shared among the cities. Yes, we have done it. We are ready to answer the guiding question of this video. Only a few neurons are enough to learn simple non-interacting car racing. In the face of the fact that a human brain has more than a billion times more neurons, why are we so much challenged by car racing games? I suspect, that compared to for example chess, the bottleneck is not the information processing, but that features like reaction time and concentration are limiting factors. This is the end of part 1. In part 2, we will make things more interesting. In addition to the brain, we will simultaneously let physical properties of the car evolve. Thank you for watching.